I got clothes everywhere. I'm in the middle of packing. I'm really limited on the filming that I can do here. It's so insane. Bro, this is crazy. Yes, I will grab that. Woo! It feels so good to be back home, wake up in a somewhat semi-organized slash clean apartment. I'm currently getting ready for this week's Whatnot Live. Of course, as always, Thrifro, T-H-R-I-T-R-O-W. Follow me on there. Top link in the description. But this video is not about me being back home. As you guys can tell from the thumbnail and title, it's actually about an experience in Thailand that I did not get to document. And it is actually imperative that this video gets released now because these items that I am running on whatnot, I got from Thailand. I literally was just filming a recap for one of the Thailand videos going through some of the pickups, but I just wanted to see if it fits because I do like this piece and I have one at home. Who's calling? I think you guys might have to go to uh, your warehouse right now. Oh, like right this second? If you guys did not watch that video, click it right there. In the middle of filming that recap, I had to interrupt the video because today is the day that I got into somewhere special. I don't know what to expect, but I've heard good things. I'm gonna have to film these recaps later on. I got clothes everywhere. I'm in the middle of packing. Swatika. How you mean? Yes, fast, as fast as possible. Yeah. Okay. Sabai, sabai. Sabai, sabai. Yeah. Music. Music. You like DJ Harvey? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. Eminem. Oh. oh. How many blind guardian shirts are there? What do you do? Do you check? Check. What did I think? Is it? Oh, it's a pearl jam. Oh. Hot. Can I see that? Can I try yeah. it on and get it if it fits? Yo. Yeah. Yo. Don't pull an air where you like do twists and turns and it just fits. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you. Done. <laughs> that fits. Hey, my girl. Captain, that fits. That fits how I wear my misfit shirt. Oh. Ooh. See, he said this. Huh? Sick crap, sick crap. Yeah. I have the crew neck of that. This is everything we went through today. We went through a lot of stuff. I got this little stack right here. I'm really limited on the filming that I can do here, but just know, uh, some damage has been done. Okay, so right here, it's kind of important that I add some context. So we actually left this warehouse that night. After we picked out all this stuff, we couldn't take any of it with us because we did not have any cash left. When we went to Thailand, we had no idea whether or not we were going to get in this warehouse up until we got the call. I literally got dropped off in a random intersection. Then I had to hop on the back of a scooter, hold out the directions to the scooter driver as he is driving. This isn't like a place that you can just go. I don't remember exactly how much stuff I picked out, but there was one piece in particular that I could not leave at the warehouse. This absolutely gorgeous eight ball and MJG wrap tee. As you guys can see, it's a promo. It's single stitch. It says Smoke One Productions on the sleeve, Mercy Management on the other sleeve, the eight ball and MJG front hit, as well as the Suave House back hit. I have never seen one of these. I know multiple rap tee collectors who have never seen these. Definitely a piece that I was just, I couldn't leave behind. So I took the last bit of remaining cash bought that I had left and bought this shirt, subtracted it from the total, and then left the rest of the shirts there to go back and pick up the next day. However, this was our last day in Thailand. First thing in the morning, we had to go to the bank, try to withdraw some more bot, and then head back to the warehouse. Hey, Rocha. Yeah. Did you grab your money out of the bag? I don't see it. Did you put it in the, uh, you didn't grab it at all? You sure? <laughs> yes, sir. We re-up, baby. No big deal. It's like, Wait, how much is this? Like three thousand dollars? We're coming back. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Five 
If it was just the back, it looked like be cooler, huh? It's kind of cool. Yeah. It's just like, bro, 500 is too good. It is hot. It's been like five. And I said, we'll pay extra. I said, you said you wait 10, 15, we pay extra. He said, okay. I promise how hot it is. Uh, photo. Photo. Do you feel like any part is better or worse, or do you think it's all kind of equal? I feel like some of them are already kind of. It's like, it it's like complete trash and then banger. Yeah, it's not even like organized in any way. It's so insane. Bro, this is crazy. It's a chicken beating the ship and it's got naked chicks on the back. Yes, I will grab that. Previous night, we just went through this one room of clothing where everything was sorted and organized. We actually didn't have time to go through the mounds of clothes in this warehouse. And to be honest, a lot of the stuff in those mounds of clothes, it wasn't really anything super crazy. However, there was one piece that I found and when I asked him for a price, he said 500 baht, which was by far the cheapest shirt out of everything that I picked. The stuff in this warehouse was not like one or two dollars. The prices were fair, but these people aren't dumb. Like these. People know their sh I would say a lot of the vintage people over in Thailand probably have more knowledge than a lot of the vintage people that I meet here in the US. I just feel like the majority of the people doing it in Thailand have a genuine love for it. So the previous night, all the piles were like a thousand baht, 1500 baht, 2000 baht, and so on and so forth. When I heard 500 baht for this shirt right here, it's a little 1980s Beverly Hills shirt, super cool artsy. I love the colors, the graphics, single stitch. You can actually see the copyright date right there. Absolutely absolutely gorgeous tea. And for $13, like that's an amazing deal in my opinion. I love this shirt. I wanted to look even further. Sadly, everything else that I liked was a little bit more expensive. So I guess I just got lucky. That being said, we did get a lot of stuff from the previous night as well. First, let me go over some of the pieces that I am running this week on whatnot. We got some opium core type pieces. This is absolutely insane. Bloody choices. You have this woman, I don't know, she's being like sacrificed. This shirt is crazy. I have no idea what this is. I've never seen it. Single stitch, back hit, really good cannibal corpse, butchered at birth. Nice little Sid Vicious on a nice man tag. Sam Hain, obituary, and just an absolutely gorgeous Sepultura with the back hit. This is actually probably one of my favorite tees that I'm running this week. Oh, and you guys may have seen me grab this in one of the earlier Thailand videos. This is also going to be auctioned off on Whatnot. Top link in the description. Of course, I will leave my Whatnot right here on the screen as well. Thrift Row, T-H-R-I-F-T-R-O-W. Bookmark the upcoming shows. Next week, I also have a personal collection sale. So I'm going to try to clear out some pieces from my collection. We have over 1.2K bookmarks on that show. So hopefully you guys tap in. You guys will probably see some pieces that you guys have not seen me show off before. And if for whatever reason you do not have Whatnot downloaded, if you do use that link to sign up, you will get $15 off your first purchase. But I digress. Let's get to some of the pieces and show you guys what we got. Sticking with the theme of the Beverly Hills, I'll show you guys some pieces that I got that are kind of more location specific. I got this super sick Detroit Skull and Crossbones tee. Single stitch, Fruit of the Loom. I love grabbing just cool shirts for different locations. I have a lot of pride for where I grew up. I love Tacoma. However, being that Tacoma is a somewhat mid-sized city with not as much of a history or nearly as big as a place like LA, Detroit, New York. I don't see as much cool vintage stuff made for the city that I love. So when I find stuff for other people's cities, 
I try to grab it. Soho, New York. Now, one thing that's really hard to get in Thailand at a reasonable price are band tees. One of the only band tees that I got at a somewhat reasonable price is the one that I am wearing, this Alice in Chains rooster. Also, I might actually end up selling uh, during my personal life. I haven't made the final decision yet, but it will either be this or this. This is an Alice in Chains that I also got while visiting this warehouse. Super sick one. This is not one you see as often. This one fits me a little better, but I like the graphic on this better, and I never see this one pop up. Nice man, size extra large, Alice in Chains. Damn, that thing is gorgeous. That was one of the cool things about this place is I was able to actually get some band tees at a reasonable price. I don't know, it's not like I'm gonna double my money on it, but I, I think I'll make like 20, 30 bucks on each of the panties. I got this really good Afghan wigs. This thing is sick. I got a Weezer. This will actually probably get ran this week as well. I got this Deftones, which I'm definitely gonna run. I'll probably actually take a photo of that and post it on my Instagram, Thrift H-R-I-F-T-R-O-W. This Dinosaur Jr. that I will probably run in the near future. I got this Depeche Mode. I actually got two of those and I got this Depeche Mode as well. I got this super sick Cheryl Crow with the back hit, the KMFDM. Then we got the Muse. When I used to hacky sack back in the day, there's one song from this band that I used to listen to because I saw a freestyle soccer video. But yeah, a little Muse simulation. This next one that I got, I'm sorry to blue ball you guys. I'm gonna show you guys this but this is already going to a friend of mine. This beautiful My Chemical Romance little MCR. And sadly, this is one of the only tees other than my personals that will not get sold on whatnot. We'll get to the personals in a second, but we do have a couple other tees to show off. Wu wear, obviously this is more street wear, but you know, Wu-Tang affiliated. Then we have the Sublime, the AFI with the back hit, East Bay Hardcore, and then the MC Hammer. Too legit to quit. I was too legit. I was too legit to quit. I do have a couple other like music related tees, but those are ones that I am keeping. Like I said, I'll show those off in a second. We got the Philosophine Espresso, Upstart Crow, E Espresso, and you have this man philosophizing and looking as if he is snorting the fumes of the caffeine. This one is super sick. So you have the dead stroke hit right here with little pocket, single stitch, and then you have a little flip of a classic MC Escher piece of artwork. Speaking of iconic graphic flips, we have the independent skateboard tee. Now this is a flip of a classic marine tee where it says, kill them all, let God sort them out. And this says, grind them all, let Indy sort them out. His little beret has the independent logo. It is on an NHS tag, which is the OG tag for a lot of those old skate brands. You have this backpacking rock climbing skeleton. Here is the shirt that I'm actually holding up in the cover photo. Little 90s graphics RT. You got the Toltecs with the skeleton jester right there. And of course it says graphics. This one is dope. The wasabi chemical compound on a fruit of the loom single stitch. This is the type of stuff that I like because this is the type of stuff you don't get to see every day. The 1999 Tom Griffin got blood tea. Speaking of mosquitoes, the amount of mosquitoes in that warehouse, like just walking outside for a brief second, you just get swarmed. Nice little single stitch 90s JFK solitude. And then two absolutely gorgeous AOP Marilyn Monroe's. You have this one right here. And then I got this Marilyn Monroe AOP as well. It is licensed right here, 1998. There's some beautiful pictures of Marilyn Monroe. And one thing that's kind of cool is on the sleeve right here. You have her Department of Defense ID. This is USO entertainer. That's kind of sick. Now those pieces will all get sold on whatnot eventually. The next couple pieces, as of right now, I have no intention or plan to sell because these are some of the personals. All right, uh, actually this one will get sold. I just need to find a good matching t-shirt to photograph this with. This has got to be one of the coolest Evian water promos on a giant tag. What the? But the rest of these are the ones that I want to keep. Some of them are bangers, some are not. First, I would say this is probably not a banger to most, but to me, I love it. And the reason that I love this graphic so much is because the one magnet that I've always had on my fridge is this one right here. My mom got this from a place she used to work at, and I just remember always having that on the fridge when I was a kid. So when I started getting into like vintage tees and I would see that graphic used on tees, of course, 
I just thought it was cool. What's special about this one is I think this is the actual original artist. It has the Jim Borgen, Jim Borgman, little hit right there. And then it's actually licensed 1989 Creative Therapy Association. It has some colors and then the little red heart popping out. This does need a little oxy, but it's so freaking soft. One thing I love about selling on whatnot is obviously the more interactive you can be, the more info about a product you are able to give. So I feel like selling on video is kind of the next best thing. And I'm able to actually explain when a shirt like this pops up where it's just super soft. The wear feels so nice. It's just a really good daily shirt. Then we got the Radiohead 2000 Dated. I love Radiohead tees, but a lot of the Radiohead tees just have like weird collars or weird fits. Just things that I don't particularly like. So I definitely wanted this one. Personally, I think it fits. You guys can let me know in the comments whether you disagree. This one I actually don't remember if I tried on, but I love this shirt. I've had the 90s version of this tee before. It's the war. Why can't we be friends? I've been called the songbird of my generation. Of course, you have the A Far Out production on United Artist Records and Tapes licensing right there. Single stitch, dated at 1975. Then we have the Cranberries, which I just sold. I like the way this one was worn in a little bit more, so that's why I decided to keep this one. If you look at the locations, you can see Thailand. Super dope, artsy. This I actually think I got at Vintage Never Die, but just in case I didn't show it off, the Sunset Strip Tattoo Test Print. This thing is Nuts. Yo, this one's kind of funny. It says SMMM -M, and then it has a signature. The copyright says 1986 and then it says a pornographers against pornography production. I don't really know the story behind this shirt, but I'm curious. Beautiful Fleetwood Mac. Sadly, there's no Stevie Nicks hit. Grew up listening to a lot of Fleetwood Mac, Elton John, Leonard Skinner. I never really appreciated that music when I was younger because that's just what my mom was listening to. But Fleetwood Mac is definitely like one of the staples during my childhood. I don't like a lot of the graphics that Fleetwood Mac used for their tees, but this one is insane. I haven't 100% decided whether or not I'm going to sell this one or keep it. And then this is actually the last tee from the warehouse. All of these, I believe, were from other adventures. If you guys did not see the other Thailand videos, go check them out. You guys will see a lot of these tees, but these are all personals that I am keeping from Thailand. If you didn't see the other Thailand videos, I'm telling you, check them out. This shirt is so good. Anyways, the last tee from the warehouse. Probably one of my favorite tees that I have in the collection. I actually had to reshoot some segments of this video because I was wearing it and I did not just want to release this grail in the beginning. I wanted to kind of have a little bit of hype behind it. It is on a Toltex tag. I feel like now I've kind of created too much hype and some of you guys might not think it's that cool, but I think it's sick. It's a 90s digital photography t-shirt. Essentials of digital photography, color calibration chart. It looks kind of like an Adobe loading screen. Super cool graphic down here as well. If you guys know what started this whole channel, that was what kind of sparked my first interest was really taking digital photography classes in high school. When I started taking those classes, I looked at it as just like an easy A and I never really understood at the time how much of a profound impact that would have on my life. But I never really took the time to learn about digital photography. I went through a bunch of stuff until I joined the military. While joining the military, I met this dude who saw some of my old pictures that I would take. A lot of these were on point and shoot cameras. He inspired me to actually buy a new camera, start pursuing photography again, and then one thing led to another. At some point, I ended up using that camera to start this YouTube channel. And what's cool to me about this shirt is just the era in which it was made. As far as I know, the first digital camera came out in the 90s, like early 90s. So to me, like finding a shirt promoing digital photography when digital photography was not really that popular is kind of sick when I left the warehouse the first day and I left all the shirts there this eight ball and MJG shirt was obviously the only shirt that I grabbed at the time I was like so worried about missing out on this shirt that I completely left this baby behind the following day that was our last day in Thailand and we had all this stuff to do we still had to pack our bags which we had a lot of stuff in the hotel room as you guys saw in the video I wanted to get this video out though because this is technically the last Thailand ish video. Obviously I'm back home. However, that being said, I do want to go back to Thailand 
very soon. We are already planning another trip back. So if you guys like the Thailand content, subscribe, turn on post notifications. While you're down there, please caress that thumbs up. Show some love in the comments. Of course, while you're down there, follow me on whatnot, through fro, T-H-R-I-F-T-R-O-W, which will be the top link in the description. And the link right underneath that will be to my Instagram, through fro, T-H-R-I-F-T-R-O-W as well. But most importantly, I just wanna say, Thank you. Anytime I have experiences like this, I try to let you guys know that none of this would be possible without you guys watching these videos, without you guys supporting. Me going to Thailand is not a possibility without you watching this video right now. I had a lot of fun kind of seeing the vintage scene out there. You know, a lot of people watch these videos. I feel like they look at Thailand as like this place where you can just go get everything super cheap. And yeah, you can get like fake stuff and modern stuff, but they know about certain things that have value. They definitely know their stuff. They know about these bands, they listen to these bands, and some of them are even more fans of this stuff than I think a lot of people here in the US. But the quality of stuff over there, in my opinion, is better, and the people are freaking amazing. So I hope to go back soon. I appreciate each and every one of you guys watching this video. I cannot say thank you enough, but of course I will say thank you one more time. So thank you as always. Keep living the star life. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. I'm just a little closer to the end. What's the business there?